everybody hear me well? I'm assuming you can all hear me. Okay. So my name is Nia, and I'm doing a talk on Design SOS. And before you guys all roll your eyes at me, I am not here to preach to you about how good design is and how much you need it. Like, I understand you're all intelligent human beings and you know the importance of design. Um, a little about me. Uh, I'm a freelance designer. I'm also a comic artist, so you'll see a few of the comics throughout this. Um, and I'm also a serious coffee addict. And when I say serious, I mean very serious. So if you guys have questions about coffee, this is the time to put your hands up. Okay, forever hold your peace now. If you've got questions about design, well, you know, we're getting to it, so just hold your peace. So now, Design SOS. The reason I'm doing this talk um, and calling it Design SOS is, as a freelancer, my work process usually goes with clients or developers coming to me, you know, panicking and asking for design because they've got this great idea and they need to find a way to make sure it communicates properly. And, you know, I go off, do my crazy thought process and analysis and all the magic and come back and give the designer a very compact little piece of paper or a little digital file. Dig design or the developer looks at it and goes, ooh, pretty. And they go off to go do their own thing. I mean, you guys don't actually, and I get paid and I'm happy. You know, that's the end of that process. You guys don't actually think about the time I've spent tweaking and the time I spend researching into getting that design until you're working without a designer. So when you're working on your pet projects, on projects that you think are amazing, you've found the answer to the meaning of life and you're patting yourself on the back. But guess what? You're working without a designer. You need a way to communicate this design in a mo most cohesive, most clean, uh, most understandable way to the common user who doesn't understand your complicated ideas yet, right? And again, you're working without a designer. So at this point, um, I've had friends or you know, most, some of the people in development communities come up to me, and the things I've noticed are always one of these three. So that little smudge, that little imperfection, I can guarantee you is always going to be one of these three problems. And I know white space, being consistent, and contrast are basic design concepts. They're concepts everybody talks about, everybody knows about them. The thing is, they're so basic and they're so obvious, they're so easy to miss. It's like that semicolon you forget somewhere and you're dying to figure out why it's not working. Same idea here. So now white space. The more elements, the more pieces you have on a site or on your first page, the more attention or the less attention the user pays to your site because there's more things you're trying to shove down their throats. It's, it's a jumbled mess. Like, why should they give you that time? You have three seconds to grab a user's attention and then they're off. So now, the following sites that I'm showing you as examples are not bad sites. They work well, their functionality is good, and they're design-wise, for the most part, they're pretty okay. But there are pieces of it that could be better. So now this site, one of the key elements here is white space. That's one of the biggest problems with this site. You see that logo? <coughs> Excuse me. So I understand you guys want to get your logo and your branding out there very forcefully. Make sure everybody knows who it is, right? But if you're trying to shove a logo like that down somebody's throat, what's going to happen is you're going to miss out on valuable space. And now all this other content is being squeezed in there, really jam-packed, and it looks more messier than it needs to be. You can find other ways of bringing that same focus to the logo by actually giving space around the logo, making it a little smaller and making it a little bit more to the center or the corners. And because of the color scheme and the fact that letters are nicely bolded, will be enough to drag the user's attention. And then you'll also have enough space for all of these pieces for them to look like singular pieces of, you know, columns of boxes of content, making it a little bit more bite-sized and available, easily digestible for users, right? Now, Martin Fowler, great developer. His stuff is amazing. I'm not criticizing his work yet, so, you know, don't get mad at me. <laughs> but when you first land on that site, the first thing your eye lands on 
is his face. Because a human eye recognizes or goes to the most comfortable thing to look at first. And we're always looking for human faces in patterns. His text here is really important. So is all his text here. But they're so huge and they take up such amounts of space. They look like a more, you know, they don't differentiate themselves as different sections so much, as smaller pieces so much, that the human eye just automatically looks at the picture first. And then you take your time to go into the content. A regular user will not give you that time. So if he'd made his text there a little smaller, actually gave it a little bit more lining, like line space in between, it'll be much easier to read and much easier to flow through, like follow through from section to section. Um, just side note, most text, reading text on size don't need to be really bigger than like 14 pixels. Um, and anything above 14 or 12 pixels can be headers, actually. So Joel on software, this guy's side, amazing. I love it. His picture here is black and white, doesn't take away from the site. In, in, in fact, doesn't really grab your attention and take away from the content at all. You're first looking at his content or his logo and then his picture. And his content is in nice bite-sized little boxes that it's easy and logically, like visibly easy to follow through. You know, you can go from left to right <coughs> very easily. His text is not that big either. So it's very, it's not like in your face, it's very subtly there, but it's there very visibly because of all this white, white space around it. Make sense? So now moving on, being consistent. Now when I say being consistent, I mean being consistent with your colors, with your typography, and your alignment. All three has to have consistency. Um, usually people you know, have one or two of them and they miss out on the other because they're trying to be a little creative or trying to add variety. But um, more than being creative, try to be consistent because if you be more consistent, it's easier for the user to follow along, right? So my rule is usually stick with three. Three colors, black and white are colors and they're great colors. In fact, they're chic, they're in right now, so go for them and use an accent color. So some reds or blues, one, or one, or one red or blue, don't use both kind of thing. Um, just to add highlight and accent to help you emphasize things a little bit better. Font styles, when I say three font styles, I don't mean three separate fonts. I mean bold, regular, light or italic kind of thing. Stick with either sans serif or serif or you know, maybe one variation. The more cohesive, the more um, consistent you are, the easier it is for a user to follow along. Um, three alignment patterns. You don't have to say everything left line. You can do some left and then right, but stick with that same pattern. So if it's like you start with left, right, left, right, keep following left, right, left, right. Because that way, it's the user know exactly what's going to happen in the next page. There's no surprises, right? Now this side. Really, really perfectly functionable. Design is not that bad, actually. The problem with this side here is it's got nine colors, including the white, 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then white, 10. 10 colors. I mean, it's got really cool illustrations here and some really cool illustrations, but because there's so many variety of stuff, you're losing focus on what is most important, the content here. It's talking about jobs, but you barely see that in this chaotic mess of some sorts, right? I mean, yes, it's all organized well, but there's so many different varieties of font, so many different varieties of color, so many different varieties of organizing that. By the time you get to the important part, like you're taking your time to digest it. Not many users will take that time. Uber Eats, as soon as you land on this site, you know exactly what it's about. The image works beautifully, telling you it's about food. The whole font structure here, thick, thinner, thin, but it's all sans serif. There's two colors, white, black, well, three, white, black, and green. But the green stands out so well against the white and the black that you know exactly what the call to action button there is. <coughs> Excuse me. 
you know exactly what the purpose of the site is. There isn't a lot for you to digest here. As soon as you land, the impact is very visible. You know exactly what you have to do, and you can move on with your business. Within that first second, you've already caught your user's curiosity. They want to move further with you. Okay. Now, contrast, the last bit of this whole schema, colors and images. That's where your contrast is built, really. Think of images as colors. Yes, blows your mind, right? But an image brings vibrancy and color into your site's applications too. The medium site, I'm sure you've all gone on to it at some point or the other. But look at this image. The whole scheme is black, white, with spots of green. This image is white, black, and a spot of green. It works so seamlessly with their content, it doesn't take away from the content. The vibrancy of that image is actually helping to emphasize this content a lot better. As soon as you land on this site, you're reading the text. Even if this image is there, you're reading the text because the contrast here is the highest, and this just adds some subtlety to it just gives it a little bit more the human empathy part of it, right? Just makes it a little bit more relatable to your users. The design of it is very simple, nothing revolutionary, but it's so easy to follow through because the contrast is great, amazing white space, and the image is being treated like a color in itself to bring just that like tidbit of vibrancy for it, right? This side. You know, the first thing that my eye landed on when I went to this side, was his ad right here. Not his content, but the ad. There's great white space around the ad. And the ad in itself is so clean with tons of white space around the text. First thing you see is that vibrant little ad. You're missing out on his logo and his branding and all these other important pieces. The green and the black does not provide enough of a contrast um, or give enough of an impact that your eye doesn't move from here first, like it goes here first and then goes there. And that's a problem, especially when it's a personal you know, project or you're trying to explain the meaning of life. That's a big problem, right? So like I said, if you guys have designs that you're doing yourself, you're doing an implementation for your personal portfolio, explaining the meaning of life, whatever it may be, if you just think about these three pieces, white space, consistency, and contrast, I promise you, that's where the fault is. That's where that little iffiness with your, define looks, your design looks like, right? So that's my talk. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing complicated here. Everything is obvious, but just reminding you, you know? Um, any questions, answers, any issues or concerns? This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.